Hi there! My name's Marzena and I want to welcome you in my very first ever YouTube video. I was preparing myself for this for over a year now and today finally I'm gonna make my first attempt to transfer a doll into a doll figurine. I swear, I've never done it before. I never changed dolls' makeup or hair or never even considered collecting dolls in fact. It's a whole new world for me! It will be my first time with this hobby, so I hope it would be gentle. I'm a noob here. So let's hope that my struggle will be a nice piece of entertainment for you. And who knows, maybe we can even make it look decent. Let's dive in! I wanted my doll to be a witch doctor, and I started the project by searching through the web, looking for inspiration. I wanted her to be ethnic, with afro hair and tribal tattoos or body paint. And also I wanted to give her this fierce look, with bones and blood all over, weird face piercing and angry facial expression. Because of her skin tone, and because I don't have all my workshop tools where we live now, I chose Claudine Wolf. Yeah, I think she will be perfect. Let's do it! As a first step, I cut off her hair really close to her head, with very sharp scissors. It was a little bit scary, because I never destroyed a doll like that before, even when I was a child. Well, once I gave my favorite Barbie doll a short haircut, but I regretted it instantly. And that's what she left me with. Big pile of yucky hair. To get inside her head, we can use hypnosis, boiling water or hair dryer. I chose the third option. I'm gonna heat up the head to melt the glue that's inside, but mostly to get the vinyl really squishy, so I will be able to remove the head from the body without destroying the neck pack that's inside it. That's the theory at least. Here goes nothing! Yay! It worked! It didn't break! Now I'm using my combination pliers to remove the hair plugs and the glue from the inside of the head. But I quickly switched tools to the surgical tweezers that my mother-in-law gave me. Much better. Thank you, Kate. I struggled and struggled until I found out that scrubbing the head from the inside is a better way than pulling the hair plugs through the neck hole. What is a day without learning something new, right? Then I just needed to remove this nasty mass from the head and that will be it. I swear, that is the yuckiest thing that I've done in my life. But at the same time, it's very satisfying. Seriously, how much glue can they squeeze inside those tiny heads? I'm using a pure acetone to clean the head from the factory paint. And unlike the previous tasks, that one goes really quick. Good job, acetone! I found those weird marks on my future witch doctor's head. Some hand curved numbers? Maybe she already is some kind of a witch. I squeezed the head pretty drastically to remove all the paint and now she's clean. To do the same thing with the body, I used a non-acetone nail polish remover because the acetone could melt the plastic. All that's left is to sand down the plastic seams on the doll parts as well as her sculpted panties and factory number on her back.
Using exacto knife, I cut off her puppy ears and made her face expression a little bit more angry. I found using a Dremel with really fine milling cutter pretty helpful with that. I wanted her teeth to be visible with her lip lifted up on one side. Then I made tiny holes for her nose and cheeks piercing. Now I know that making holes in your doll without marking the spot first is a mistake. So I tried to cover it up with some epoxy sculpt and drew another one. And yeah, it's even worse. I cried internally for a while and decided to remove the nasty green epoxy and make the holes larger and, hopefully, more symmetrical. I smoothed the edges and now she looks decent. I can now reattach the head with the body and spray it outside with three layers of Mr. Super Clear before the face up. I wrapped the body in clean piece of fabric so only the head will be covered in more Mr. Super Clear layers during the face up process. I started with brown pencil to mark the eyes and I already knew that the pigmentation of my Kohinoor pencil is just no good. I will definitely have to stop being a Scrooge and buy some Faber-Castell in the future. I darkened the lips a little bit and added white to the eyes. I used soft pastels in reds and browns to darken the skin tone a little bit and add some depth to the whole face in general. With even darker brown, I started to define eyes a little bit more, place the irises and the basic eyebrows shapes. Every time when I feel that the color is not building anymore, I spray the face again with MSC. I draw a little wrinkles for her angry face and started adding color to the eyes.
I highlighted the forehead, nose, chin and the cheekbones with light soft pastels. Because of the bad pigmentation, I was forced to use acrylic paints. Oh, the pain! I really suck at tiny brushes. I also painted the teeth white. I darkened the lips and the eyes with pure black pencil. And you know what? I hated it. I removed the eyes and started again. Added some blush, marked the shape. Painting the right eye is a pain in the butt. I'm the left eye person, definitely. I added yellow. And more white. And more yellow. Decided to give her an eyeshadow in red and green. Darkened the corner. Yes, that looks like crap. Again, this time I only removed the last layer with a wet cotton pad. I felt that at least the shape is okay enough. I highlighted the face a little bit more and started to building up a color by adding orange and red to the irises. I defined the brows more and added some red into the holes. While I continued working on the eyes, I finally started to feel good about this face up. She looks mad. I started adding some hair to her eyebrows, draw pupils and details to the irises. Again, I painted the whites with acrylics, but left out the irises this time. I 
I don't know why I drew those hair. While I was adding some finishing touches, my battery went down, so I painted her lashes, added some light spots and gloss to the eyes and lips of camera. I chose her pose and using super glue, made her stay that way. Now I need to attach the doll to her stand that I made from a piece of wood. I drilled holes in her feet and in the stand and connected everything with bamboo skewers. Perfection! I used a tiny piece of wire to make her a nose ring. On a thicker wire I'm gonna create the bony spikes piercing her cheeks. First I tried to make them with epoxy. In fact, they didn't want to cooperate. I pretty much hate this material. I decided that gluing the wire in place will help me a lot. And this time I wasn't wrong. I glued nose ring with tiny speck of super glue And the thick wire with a hot glue. Pardon my repulsive glue gun. I switched to air drying clay and it went much smoother. I also glued a piece of clay to her crouch and leg to create some kind of loincloth. And I wanted it to be wavy to give the doll an illusion of movement. I decided to use the clay to cover the joints and make a smoother transition.
I was struggling a little with the shape of the back piece of her loincloth. Gravity, you sneaky bastard, you did it again. So I decided to go extreme. Yeah, that's right. Now with the help of the wire enforcement, the piece will stay as I please. I glued the belt on and it was finished. Using acrylic paints with matching color, I covered the joints and the body was ready for the blushing. Once again I used soft pastels, the same color I used on the face. I added shadows with brown and red and used yellow for highlights. I also gave her nipples, but I thought that YouTube might not appreciate the close-ups of that process. Here I'm cutting out tiny feathers from Warbra Black Art. Hitting them with my heat gun and shaping them as I want. Cute! I took a soft but thick wire and gave my girl a collar and bracelets. As you can see, the back piece of the outfit breaks, so I will have to fix it with a super glue. Just like that. From scraps of warbler, I sculpted a bird skull that will be a great pauldron for my wildling. I know it looks like a dog's nose now. Just trust me. I covered it with piece of warbler so it looks like one whole piece. And I glued it to her shoulder. I cut the kitchen sponge into tiny bits and I painted up the bony parts. I will leave anatomical correctness for some other projects maybe, don't judge me.
I added some blood to her piercing, so it won't look like they are part of her skeleton. They are just funny jewelry. Also painted some blood spatters and tribal body painting in red and white. I painted the warbler's feathers red. I even made a tiny bone dagger. Real cutie. I wanted to give her some wavy pieces of bandages, so I cut a long strip of white warbler, heated it up and attached it to a doll. Then I added some dirt and shadow to the fabric and the bandages. Using Vaseline on a ping pong ball, I created the basic shape for a skull headgear from Warbler. Then I build it up with epoxy. I had a problem to grasp the piece while painting it, so I glued two pins to the back. Easier to hold and a good way to attach to the head. Some finishing touches here and there. I also created a tiny necklace for her. I'm using hair straightener, acrylic yarn, Elmer's glue, pet brush, scissors, pencil, 
and my phone to create the hair wefts. I used my phone to make identical yarn strands. Then I attached them to the pencil piece by piece. I brushed the yarn thoroughly with the pet brush. I'm losing tons of yarn here, but I hope that that's okay, so I don't worry. I straighten the yarn with a hair straightener until it is smooth. Then I cut them off from the pencil and glued to the smooth surface little by little. When the glue dried, I could peel the wefts, cut them clean and turn them into bigger and smaller pieces. Using hot glue, I attach the hair to the doll's head. I'm starting out at the hairline and go up to the top. For the curls, I use this old telescopic radio antenna. I think it's an amazing tool because you can create rich variety of curls and waves. I took a strand of hair, roll it around the antenna and heat it up with hair straightener. And voila! Repeat until done. I brushed out the curls and cut them shorter to create this cute afro look. I pinned down the headgear and glued the feathers onto the doll. With my nemesis epoxy sculpt, I created some bone pieces for the stand and painted them with the acrylics. For the base, I took some kitty litter. Don't worry, it's clean, straight from the bag. I poured some wood glue and stir it thoroughly. Then I covered the stand with the mixture.
It was running down, so I needed to make some walls from cardboard. To get rid of the cardboard, I had to use a sandpaper and my good old Dremel. I cleaned everything up. First rule, keep your workspace clean. I covered everything in brown acrylic. Then added some highlights. I really like how it looks. I still needed some jungle vibe, so I glued on chunks of moss and bunch of fake fern, using my new wireless, finally not repulsive glue gun. Finally, I attached the bones that I made. And my very first one-of-a-kind doll is finished. It was so much fun. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And what do you think about my witch doctor? Personally, I'm pretty much satisfied with the result. And I think it is not that bad for a newbie like me. But maybe you have some tips or advice. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm sorry for the video quality, I'm still figuring out my camera settings, and next time it will be better. If you liked my struggle and what came from it, please leave a like and subscribe, because I would love to practice more and share with you the outcome. Thank you all for watching and see you soon! She's not supposed to be.